Hi, this is Timothy Carroll and Carroll Consultancy Group. And today we have with us Matt Walden. Matt is trained as an osteopath and naturopath in the 1990s, completing a BSc honors, later a master's in osteopathic medicine. He then went on to train in the Czech Institute between 2001 and 2005. Matt has worked with clients such as Chelsea Football Club and consulted to other premiership football teams as well as with elite athletes from multiple disciplines. Good stuff, Matt. Matt <laughs> so travels the, uh, the world teaching for the Czech Institute um, and presents his own materials to audiences of diverse backgrounds from young school children through to highly trained medical professionals. So welcome, Matt. We're looking forward to uh, getting your expertise on health uh, and uh, yeah, so welcome. What's our first topic today? Thank you very much. Yes, uh, well, uh, I was going to explain a bit about the foundation health principles that we teach in the, in the Czech system. Um, and so uh, that's the foundation, just to give you a quick overview, the foundation health principles are to eat right, to move right, to sleep right, to breathe right, to drink right, and to think right. So there's six of them. Perfect. And, uh, and so the, that's the kind of simplicity side of it is if you can do those things right, then you're going to have optimal health and optimal performance, not just, you know, sort of uh, in sports or whatever, but at work as well, you know, so in terms of your actual ability to perform in the office or uh, in terms of getting creative, getting productive, that kind of thing. So getting those things right is fundamental, which is why the foundation health principles, but, but, the question is, well, what does it actually mean to eat right? And what does it mean to drink right and think right and move right, and breathe right and so on? So that's, that's what we're going to be talking through. Awesome. So we're on to the first one, which is eat right. So mm -hmm. let's hit that um, and give us uh, like three things that we can focus on uh, or, or more or less uh, in, in regards <laughs> to eat right in the time that we have today. So eat right. Why is yeah. that? Okay. So eat right. Well, so e eating right uh, can, can, there's a number of different directions you can approach this from. So one direction is to say, well, eating right in terms of actually how you eat and the environment you eat in. So, you know, what you find is a, a very common situation in today's modern go, go, go life is that people eat on the run uh, and not necessarily actually running, but, but literally sort of grabbing stuff and they're, they're trying to tap out emails as they go. They're not paying attention to their foods. So they're not present with their foods. They're often taking a couple of chews swallowing it down and getting the next it's like a to-do list type thing to eat lunch or to eat dinner uh, before the next activity and actually getting into a rest and digest state and calming down and taking time to enjoy the the the, the food the textures the flavors etc can have a massive uh, impact positive impact on digestion so so when we say about eating right well that's that's one element of eating right and tied in with that is preparing your own food that that engages people in what's called the kind of cognitive uh phase of digestion so it's, it's actually it's, it's technically it's known as the cephalic phase but it just basically means the brain is engaged you're thinking about your dinner um and because you're preparing it and cooking it and smelling it and feeling the textures as you cook then that really prepares the digestive system so it's far better to do it that way than to get a takeaway or pre-packed dinner if you actually make your own food then that gets the digestive process off to a good start. Then of course, when you start to eat, chewing the food effectively, like I just said, uh, taking your time, relaxing, getting into this rest and digest state, which is the opposite of the state that most of us are in most of the day, which is fight flight. So, so that's, a, that's one way to look at it. Um, then of course you can look at the actual content of what you're eating. And that's obviously critical because there's the, uh, the old premise that you are what you eat. Um, and that can be also refined a little further to you are what you don't excrete. Um, so, so in other words, you know, you, you could be eating well, but you, you might not be processing it. And so this is where, you know, you need a little bit more technical expertise. And so, um, you know, one of the screening tools that we use is called a health appraisal questionnaire. And that helps us to understand more about how the person is digesting and which components of their digestive system might be compromised. Um, and so essentially, like I say, if you, if, if you are what you don't excrete, then essentially that's whatever you keep in the system. Okay. So if, if for example, the stomach's not working so well, that makes it much harder to digest proteins. Um, 
if the, the small intestine isn't uh, working so well, well, that also is proteins, but it's more fats and carbohydrates. If the gallbladder is not working so well, it's very difficult to uh, digest fats. So we can screen those kinds of things to make sure the actual system is doing what it should do. Um, and then, of course, the foods that you eat themselves are going to influence that as well. So, um, you know, if you're eating, let's say, you know, a standard American diet, which is fairly heavily processed uh, and prepackaged, um, well, then there's a lot of pro, uh, preservatives in that um, kind of a diet because it, it has to have preservatives because it has to have a good shelf life. Um, it's often not so fresh, of course, and that's why it's got the preservatives in it. Um, it often has uh, fats in it that aren't so helpful um, and, and can create irritation and inflammation in the system. Um, often has high sugar because one of the things that the food manufacturers know is that if you put sugar into anything, in fact, when you look even in meats, you'll find there's sugar added to the meat because it makes it more addictive, more palatable, and so people go back and buy more meat. So these are the kinds of things that can certainly impact on how you digest and also then how your body responds to, to, to what you're eating. Um, so I guess to, to tie it in a bit more with, with performance at work, a, a classic example here is when people eat too much in the way of uh, either carbohydrates, which is the, the most common one. So too many sugars or grains. Um, and so they get what's called a, a postprandial dip, which means a, literally a, a, a drop in energy after lunch. And uh, in fact, it's one of those things where they've known for, for many years that actually it's a good time to do a business deal is immediately after lunch. And I, I was reading a book um, about this, um, and it's called, now which one was it? I think it might be The Essentialist, or, it might, or, or maybe it was, an, it was another book. But, but what it was pointing to was the idea that if, if um, you eat a nicely balanced lunch, and the people you're negotiating with have too high a carb lunch, then what ends up happening is you end up getting the best deal because you, you're on the on your game. Right. Um, and that's that postprandial dip. So that's the idea that you know you have a few too many carbs, your blood sugar goes up very quickly, and your body's response to that is to release insulin and drop it back down. So it drops back down, and that's where you feel oh, sleepy and tired. Um, and you're in no fit state to, you know, A, work productively, B, negotiate, whatever it might be that's important in your role. Um, and, so, uh, and so that can end up costing the business a lot of money and a lot of success. So how do we avoid that? How do we make sure that, um, you know, we're in uh, our energy levels are in their peak, uh, that we can sustain those energy levels just through eating correctly? What, what would you recommend? Well, so this is all about balancing the macronutrients. That's one of the key things. So the macronutrients are proteins, carbs, and, and um, fats. Okay, yeah. so they're, those are the, they're just three of them, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. And um, so, you know, if you just, just simply say, well, I'm going to have a third of each of those in my diet, that would probably work quite well for, you know, if you imagine a bell-shaped curve, it will work well for the people in the middle, but there will be outliers on either end. Right. And the outliers, the ones down this end might do well on a lower protein and fat diet and more carbs more like a typical vegetarian diet um, and then you might have people at the other end which are more more um, kind of your Atkins style eaters or, or your paleo or uh, ketogenic diet and they do really well on high protein high fat and low carb Got it. but to work out where you fall on that curve that's where again you might need a little bit of input to, to, to help um, but so most people, if you think of the standard American diet in terms of that bell-shaped curve, well, it's it's down this end. It's, it's towards the carbohydrate end. Yeah. And so, what you end up with is is essentially a lot of people eating too much carbs, and then they struggle with concentration. So, to balance carbohydrates, you need proteins and fats, and and high-quality proteins and fats. So that's that's kind of the the general uh, bit of advice there. But then. Another key thing for, for anyone that's over the age of 35 is that um, your enzyme systems in your body, so the, the enzymes that you use to break down the foods that you're bringing on board, they get fatigued like in any other part of the body, you know, just like you perhaps can't run as fast uh, beyond the age of 35 as you could when you were maybe 20 or something or 25. Mm. Um, and the enzyme systems are kind of similar. 
but the beauty of the enzyme systems is that what we can do is we can replenish enzymes by eating fresh foods. So you only find enzymes in foods that are raw. Um, so, you know, fruits, vegetables that haven't been cooked or, or that are very lightly cooked. Um, uh, yeah, of course, salads and, and rare meats um, or raw meats, you know, so you can get enzyme content from there. And that is what actually gives you a sense of um, vitality when you eat. That's why you feel good after a fresh salad or, or a, you know, a nice fruit salad or something like that. Yeah, and you get that sense of well-being. That's the enzymes in your system giving you that sense of, uh, of health. Excellent. So, so the big question I think that everyone's asking right now in this, you know, climate of COVID-19 is, is eating right. So, you know, just wrapping up our, our discussion, um, if we're to eat right, how will that help us to maintain our immune system, uh, defend uh, off against viruses and, and colds and, and bacteria, et cetera, like that? Just quickly. Sure. Well, so, you know, there's obviously certain nutrients that are known to support the digestive system, sorry, the immune system, um, such as uh, vitamin C is obviously the classic one, but also vitamin D you get from fish um, and from certain animal products. Um, so there's, there's a number of, you know, uh, minerals as well, things like selenium and zinc you get from, from seeds. Uh, and, you know, there's various sources of those seafoods. Um, but, but the point being that those things all facilitate immune function. Um, and then of course, certain habits that people get into can, can inhibit immune function. So for example, high sugar diets can, uh, they actually cause your natural killer cell level, which is one of your key immune, uh, cells to drop off for about six hours after even just a teaspoon of sugar. So sugar itself is, is quite a potent inhibitor of um of the immune system and stress as well and one of the interesting things about food is that food if, if you are intolerant to it or you're eating too much of a given food it can become a stress on the system as well yeah. and in doing that stress then inhibits the immune system so so we want to look at nutrition and and eating right from the perspective of getting the right things in that, that support immune function but also avoiding the things that inhibit immune function um, and there's lots of other things tied into that as well. For example, if you eat the right foods before you go to bed, you're going to sleep better. If you eat rubbish before you go to bed, you're not going to sleep so well. When you don't sleep so well, then that messes with blood sugar regulation. It impacts on immune function, you know, and you don't, you know, you just don't repair as well because you're not getting as much sleep. So there's, there's many different sort of directions it can go. Yeah. But it's a, a key so in a, in a nutshell, if, if people are to eat right, uh, in, in this climate yeah. and, and for life in general, just mm. keeping it simple, they need to focus on, you know, what are the, the three things they need to focus on, leave, wrapping it up? The three things, gosh. Um, so keeping it simple. I would say, uh, you know, eat, eating whole, ideally organic if possible, but whole fresh foods, natural yeah. foods. That, that's, that's absolutely key. Balancing the macronutrients. Uh, and so when you balance the macronutrients and you eat whole fresh foods, then what it does is it means that you're going to get your micronutrients. So you don't really have to worry so much about your vitamin C's and your seleniums and your zincs and all those things we were just talking about. Because yeah. you've got the balance of the macronutrients, you'll be getting the micronutrients anyway. Um, and so then I would say the third thing is essentially getting in the right state to digest your food. Um, so, you know, essentially creating a rest and digest environment around the time that you eat. Brilliant, Matt. That's fantastic advice. Thanks so much. And uh, I look forward to chapter two, which we're going to be coming up with yeah. very soon. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Bye. That's a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>